Guys, I have a question. It's a serious one. One that I don't think I've ever asked on this channel. Why exactly do people like cruiser motorcycles? Now, I know many of you are about to jump on the bandwagon, grab your pitchforks, and light up your torches and say, Yammy, you're a sport bike simp. You'll just never understand. But the reality is... I've owned, ridden, and given away several cruisers, and spoiler alert, I've enjoyed many of them. I think that people forget that when we had the Indian Scout, that's one of my favorite cruisers, super peppy, fun engine, this silly, rear happy, slidey thing, it was all low, slung, and cool. I thought the Rebel 1100 from Honda was really cool as well. There's plenty of cruisers I've ridden that I've really enjoyed. The Triumph Rocket 3, I mean, come on. But, I will be perfectly honest, I've never really gelled with them. They were never something that I aspired to. I never wanted to attain one or own one. As many of you know, in my stable, I've never had a cruiser for my own personal motorcycles. And I just feel like the value proposition for new ones just aren't exactly there. And although I've ridden several cruisers that I really enjoy, ultimately I think that a sport touring bike, an ADV, or even a Goldwing will just do everything kind of better. Now, I get it, cruisers are about emotion and soul and the intangibles, but today I wanted to break down objective pros and cons to cruiser motorcycles and just talk about why people actually enjoy these bikes. So, if you're a cruiser simp, stick around, I think you will be surprised. Let's go over the cons first. Let's rip off the band-aid, let's talk about some of the bad parts about cruiser motorcycles. Number one, they just don't lean over as much. Why is that important? Well, clearance on a motorcycle is a big deal. If you're trying to carve up corners or simply doing slow speed parking lot maneuvers, it's not really that fun or interesting to scrape hard parts. Objectively speaking, you want a motorcycle that can actually lean over so that you can operate it correctly. Now, many cruisers have this issue solved. You can raise the bike a little bit, you can change the foot peg mounting positions, you can create a motorcycle that actually has de decent clearance. See the King of the Baggers bikes that they run in Moto America. They've massively modified those motorcycles to be able to achieve crazy lean angles. That's an extreme example, but you know what I mean. So that's the kind of big con to me. First off is objectively speaking, the geometry and the rider ergonomics of these bikes are just a little compromised. Uh, they're not really well suited to actually be able to lean over. To which you might say, Yami, they're not designed to do that. They're designed to just go in a straight line. But eventually you will have to turn your motorcycle. I hate to break it to you. The second point I wanna make is that cruisers are really style over performance. And that's not inherently a bad thing. I think that, you know, stuff like the Royal Enfields, Ducati Scramblers, Triumph Bonnevilles, you could make the case that those motorcycles are also style over performance. However, because of their more relatively normal and standard rider triangles and geometry setup, ultimately you still get a motorcycle that operates like a motorcycle, whereas cruisers will typically kind of do away with objective performance metrics and objective rideability in favor of stylistic choices. I'm thinking of stuff like the bobber motorcycles that people sell, bikes with 160 with front ends like the Harley-Davidson Sportster, the new one, the S, and eventually you just start to think to yourself, well, why is this motorcycle compromising so much of performance in favor of style. Cruisers are also typified by Harley Davidson. Here in America, cruisers equals Harley Davidson, and whether you want to admit it or not, the brand has a lot of baggage, both good and bad. For a lot of riders, Harley is the pinnacle of American motorcycling, the home team, they want to root for them, they want to chant rah, 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 we love Harley, all that good stuff. But for a lot of riders, myself included, there's a lot of baggage that comes with being a Harley person. And sometimes when you ride a cruiser, whether it's a metric cruiser or a European cruiser, a Triumph, it'll get bumped in and lumped in with the Harley crowd. And the Harley crowd is very unique and there's too much to say about them in this one video. So in my opinion, it can be a con when it comes to owning a cruiser to be associated with Harley Davidson and the Sons of Anarchy and the biker gangs and those sorts of things. It really depends on the circles with which you run. I know plenty of Harley people that are amazing, good-natured people, but I think for the average consumer, the average American, the average normal person, if they see a guy wearing a leather jacket on a Harley-Davidson, they might not have a good opinion of them.
I mean, I might not have a good opinion of a guy on a sport bike either, but that's neither here nor there. I think also the feet forward riding position is just a little awkward for some people. It feels bizarre to kind of put your feet in front of you when you're riding a motorcycle. You're not connected to the bike. You're not gripping the tank with your knees. And truthfully, cruisers with mid-mounted positions aren't really all that better either. I find them even more awkward than the foot forward controls because you're in this awkward clamshell position on the bike, so that's definitely a con too. And ultimately, I think cruisers are just expensive for what they are. I think they're a poor value proposition when bought brand new considering the performance of the engine, the performance of the bike, and again, not everything about motorcycling is about performance. I understand some people want to own a motorcycle just because it looks pretty and it makes a great sound. Totally get that. Ducatistas rejoice, you are seen, you are heard. But at the end of the day, we are buying motorcycles based on value propositions. And if the only value it's bringing you is you love the way it looks, that's totally fine. For me, my bike has to do a little something for me to own it. Now, with all that being said, let's talk about some of the pros about owning a cruiser. And the biggest pro that I can think of is a used metric cruiser, that is a cruiser from Japan typically. They are some of the best value for money uh, that you can buy in motorcycling right now. You can get a used metric cruiser for truly pennies on the dollar. There are $1,500 motorcycles out there right now that are clean and good spec and good running order that you can go and buy and have fun with. And that's nothing to scoff at. Metro cruisers are usually owned by people who keep them in great shape, they're maintained, they're well kept. And ultimately, I think that in this category, we talked about how new cruisers are bad value for money, but really used cruisers and especially used metric cruisers are some of the best bargains you can find in motorcycling today. Cruisers are really easy to work on as well, and they're easy to maintain due to their lack of fairings. Now, a cruiser isn't really categorized as a naked bike, but it might as well be because there aren't any fairings and the whole thing is exposed. When the motorcycle is exposed like that, it makes it way easier to work on. I've wrenched on cruisers here and there in my time, and I've found that they are pretty easy to work on. I think cruisers as well have a super classic appeal. What do I mean by that? I mean that people see this motorcycle, they see a chromed out, low slung cruiser bike, and they think, yeah, I've seen one of those. That's a motorcycle. I understand what I'm looking at. Sometimes when you own an ADV bike or a sport touring bike, people might not get it. So if you're a little vain and you want a motorcycle that people can understand and really appreciate, well then a cruiser motorcycle definitely is going to fit the bill. Out of all the bikes that I own, my Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled is the one that often gets the most praise for being my prettiest or coolest bike, which much to my chagrin, is not the H2 or the Turbo Busa that I own. But people love the classic looks and basically all cruisers have that classic style to them. The other thing about cruisers is they typically have big, punchy, grunty engines for low down torque around town. Now, we talked about how cruiser motorcycles have performance that leaves a little bit to be desired, but Cruiser engines make a lot of torque that you can utilize very well around town. You can get in the power band really easily, get off a light really well, and it has a really nice surge of power. Doesn't have a whole lot top end, but if you're just about cruising around town or getting on the highway, a punchy, low down, big, torquey engine feels really good. And the final point about cruisers is that they have a ton of aftermarket support and the ability for modifications. A lot of these platforms have been around for a whole long time and people know how to modify them, specifically the Sportster. So that's definitely a big pro in my opinion. So there's lots of reasons why people like cruiser motorcycles. I myself am a little torn on them. On the one hand, I can respect and appreciate the way that these motorcycles look. I understand that they have a lot of emotional appeal and brand appeal, especially from the Harley Davidson side of the camp. But ultimately, they just don't do much for me. I'd rather be on a sport touring bike, an ADV, or a Goldwing over a cruiser pretty much any day of the week. The only cruiser I would personally be interested in owning would be a Triumph Rocket 3, just because it's silly and outrageous and a whole lot of fun to ride. Uh, a Indian Scout was a close second for me. I thought that bike was actually really interesting, but then I rode the FTR and I was like, well, this is the Scout, but just better in every way, and I really appreciated that too. So guys, that's my opinion on cruiser motorcycles. What do you think? Why do you think people like cruisers? Do you own a cruiser? Do you have a cruiser and a sport bike and a dirt bike in your stable? Are you more of that balanced rider kind of like I am? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And thanks so much for watching today's video. I truly do appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one. Now, just when you thought it couldn't get crazier, we got here skateboarding Yosemite Yam.
Best thing you're gonna wanna do, click on the video, watch Amy Noob. Now, I can't promise you there's gonna be any more skateboarding in that video, because that's one of them Gen Z TikToker things to do. But your old Yosemite Yam here, he's been known to do from time to time. Click the video. Do it.